Okay, I'm really short on time today, but I wanted to do a really quick video showing everyone my, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this name, I just call it the Titmouse, the Titmouse uh, Regent BR9SS, which as many of you may already know, is a stainless steel uh, reproduction of a Browning High Power. Now it's made in Turkey, unfortunately here, but you know, I had to sell a little bit of my soul to buy this. But uh, really, how can I pass up a stainless browning high power? So let's take a look at this here really quick. Now, first off, first thing you'll notice, of course, is that it is stainless. Uh, now, a lot of people think that they have a stainless browning high power, but I hate to break it to them. You actually probably have a hard chrome or a nickel browning high power, which is different. This is actually made of stainless steel. Uh, now, this is a very true uh, reproduction of a Browning High Power. If you look at it here next to like my regular Browning High Power that's black, you'll see they're pretty much identical. In pretty much every way, these guns are just exactly the same, uh, good and bad. Uh, the sights are the same, except for this one actually has a rear, uh, like kind of a combat style sight instead of just a regular dovetailed sight. But otherwise, these are pretty much the same guns. Now, my actual Browning High Power does have a few different pieces on it because I changed out the safety and the hammer and the trigger here. But otherwise, the Titmouse is basically, like I said already, just the same gun in stainless steel. In fact, it's almost too much like the original one because it has the actual original hammer that loves to bite guys my size his hand really hard. Yeah, right like that. That gets me really good as you can see right there. That's a really nice slide bite. These hammers were well known for that and this is no exception. It's just like the original high power hammers. Now this here does have more of the old style safety on it. You know, the little flush mount safety. It doesn't have the ambidextrous uh, extended safety like my uh, new Browning High Power, my actual Browning High Power has, but uh, it's still very usable. Now, unfortunately, another thing that the Titmouse has that the original Browning High Powers had is this magazine safety here. Uh, if you see that little pin in the trigger right there, that's for that little magazine disconnect. And that's also what causes that gritty trigger take up. I mean, I don't know if you, you can't hear it, of course, but if you've ever felt one of these, I don't know if you've ever shot, shot a Browning High Power, but it's got that gritty take up. That's because there's actually a little piece in there that's actually sliding up and down on the magazine to make sure the magazine's in there. The magazine has to push it in when you pull the trigger. Well, it actually, it pushes itself in when you pull the trigger back to let it know that the magazine is there, and that way the gun will fire. If there's no magazine there, it doesn't push in, and it doesn't fire. You'll see on this aftermarket trigger here, there's no pin. There's not even a place there for a pin. That's because this trigger was made for a gun that already had the magazine disconnect removed. And that's what I prefer right there because that magazine disconnect really doesn't do anything to make it safer. In my mind, if you take good care of your gun and you pay attention to what you're doing, it doesn't make it any safer. It just gives it a grittier trigger. Now, I'm not going to do any like in-depth look at this gun right now inside because uh, I'm going to do another video here coming up really soon, hopefully. Uh, I got family visiting this week, actually for the next two weeks, but hopefully I'll be able to get out here sometime and get this taken apart because what I want to do is I'm going to take all the aftermarket parts off of my high power, my actual Browning high power, and put them on this gun, including the hammer, the trigger, the takedown, everything, just to see if they're actually interchangeable. Because, you know, it looks like everything on this gun will be interchangeable. Now, the only thing I worry about is the barrel because they did make some changes to the barrels, I believe in like the 80s or 90s, that makes them a little different now. But uh, if everything but the barrel is interchangeable, I'll be happy. So I'm gonna try to do that really soon. I did already change the grip on these because the grips it came with were just nasty. I don't like these at all. They do have a little bald eagle on them, it looks like, for some odd reason. But I uh, just didn't care for the grips that came on it. They're actually kind of a lot like the original Browning High Power grips themselves, which I also don't like. But I went ahead and put some Hogue grips on this for now. I'm going to try to get some G10 grips for it before I do the teardown and build it back up. But we'll see. So there you have a quick first look at my uh, Titmouse Regent BR9SS. It is a Browning High Power Stainless clone. Uh, like I said, hopefully I'll be able to do a little bit more uh, in-depth review of this gun. I've actually taken it out and shot it. It shot very nicely. But I want to get it apart first and see if all the aftermarket parts fit on it. And then I'll let you know what I think of it.